views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Neff. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Kelly Neff, and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio on Transformation Radio, CRN Digital Talk and Affiliates, and WBLQ 1230 AM, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience healing, inspiration, and knowledge. Every week on Lucid Planet Radio, we will have some of the most gifted scientists, healers, speakers, and authors helping you to become the greatest version of yourself. You can find out so much more by visiting thelucidplanet.com. You can stream all of our podcasts for free on Lucid Planet Radio com, iTunes, and SoundCloud by searching for Lucid Planet Radio. You can also connect with me on Facebook and Twitter by searching for The Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly. And I now have an Instagram account too, so you can follow my adventures through life at The Lucid Planet on Instagram. Uh, also, really exciting, you can catch the show now in more places than ever, thanks to this amazing, expansive partnership with CRN Digital, Digital Talk Radio. Um, we are now in over 11 million homes in the U.S. in over 100 countries, including 25 stations just in Australia. We are streaming across affiliate apps like AHA, Roku, Apple TV, and more. You can catch us, depending on your region, on Time Warner Cable, Comcast, Charter, etc. And soon, we are coming to the AM Talk Radio in my home station of Denver. So you can find out all about that on thelucidplanet.com. And you can also find out how to listen to the show, come on the show, become an advertising partner on the show. And also, Justin, you can hear me speaking this summer uh, about sexuality and consciousness at some really epic events like Sonic Bloom Festival in Colorado and the In5D Paradigm Shift Conference in Berkeley, California. So stay tuned for more about that. Um, And on that note, I have something really special in store for you today, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, Many of our listeners already know my history. I'm a psychologist, really trained as a health scientist, um, and yet I'm also really a seeker of truth and knowledge. And sometimes this truth and knowledge lies beyond the study of psychology or beyond what we can objectively measure with the instruments that we have. So for today's show, I have a really insightful fusion to talk about of concepts and spirituality and science, how quantum physics meets psychology and ancient wisdom. And really, instead of treating these as separate and competing traditions, we learn that all of these perspectives can complement each other and give us very profound insights about our human experiences. And when we add the ancient wisdom teachings with cutting edge quantum physics and science and psychology, we gain a more complete understanding of who we are in terms of our energy and our consciousness. So sounds super heady, but actually there's a lot of really interesting concrete stuff uh, we can discuss. And to do this, I am delighted to welcome Valerie Varan on the show today. Valerie is a holistic psychotherapist and she is the author of the wonderful newly released book, uh, which I strongly recommend uh, checking out if you're interested in this topic. It's called Living in a Quantum Reality, Using Quantum Physics and Psychology to Embrace Your Higher Consciousness. Um, Very cool. So after an initial career in environmental engineering field, and really after being prompted from the universe, Valerie obtained her master's degree in counseling psychology. She worked traditional for many years. She went into private practice in 2006, and she is now really synthesizing her love of quantum physics, psychology, ancient wisdom, and she has come to specialize in helping spiritually awakened people embrace their transpersonal and quantum worldview, how to cope with their unexpected 
and holotropic states of consciousness and to pursue their spiritual visions for a more conscious society. These are all things that I can definitely relate to. And I know that many of our listeners can too. So on that note, let's please welcome Valerie to the show. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Dr. Kelly. Thanks for having me. Uh, It's wonderful to have you on the show, uh, Valerie. I feel like we have many commonalities um, seeking to kind of combine these perspectives, science and spirituality and ancient wisdom. I'm just so curious to hear kind of what brought you to this place in your careers, in your studies that prompted you to write this book? Well, what prompted me to write the book is probably, as you would have imagined, as a psychologist yourself, um, when I was in the in regular private practice, especially regular practice, and then going into private practice, I had absolutely no idea that there would be all these higher consciousness people that would find me. It's not like my website say said, "Hey, come on over if you're higher consciousness." <laughs> um, but all of a sudden, I was having all of these people who were already awakened or struggling with their awakening, and year after year, just noticing a pattern in things that they were going through, and that's really what prompted me to go ahead and write the book. Mm. And when you say awakening and higher consciousness, can you clarify what that means? Absolutely. So um, I would say my definition uh, from a practical as opposed to technical, as a practical standpoint, when people have awakened, they all of a sudden go from looking at the world in a very materialistic viewpoint that everything is matter, we're all things, uh, we're separated. That's the traditional conventional worldview. And when somebody awakens, whether it's at a festival, whether it's with a psychedelic, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through some spontaneous happening. The dream world, let's say, or something. The dream world, let's say, right? So many pathways into awakening. But when they awaken, all of a sudden, there's a deep knowing inside that grips them that, wait a minute, there's a different reality. There's layers and there's something that we might be calling spiritual out there. Um, higher consciousness is a little bit different because we move into awakening, but of course, as you can appreciate, we still struggle with our ego and we still struggle with living in the world exactly like we've been living in the world. Uh, when we so awakened, hard. pardon? I said it can be so hard. Just that. It, well, it can, right? Yeah. And, um, the awakening process is so hard and we're living in that ego and, All of a sudden, um, the more transformative the experience, the more someone can't live like they've been living anymore, right? It's Mm -hmm. it's so different. And so in higher consciousness, someone has actually transformed and their life has changed where now they can't not live love. Mm. They know that they're here to be love. They're trying to love. It's hard to love. And of course, we awaken into layers of love. Oh, yes. Right? Beyond oh, yes. just our partner and beyond sexes and beyond normal family. And we're awakened to, into a global sense of connection with all that is. And we're trying to love. And, and it's so easy in awareness of our ego simultaneously to awareness of our higher self. It's so easy to feel so inadequate and hence all of the issues that arise. So inadequate, so disconnected, so powerless. I mean, what it really sounds like is you are putting this information out there as somebody who is a mental health professional to try to be there to help people as they're going through the shift. And I don't know about you, but I, I feel like we're seeing more of this. And maybe sometimes I think it's just my own bias because I've gone through so many layers of this kind of awakening of realizing that everything or so many things that I knew were, were not true. And that really there's this whole big world out there. Do you, do you feel like this is something that it, we're, we're seeing momentum gaining that more and more people are kind of like waking up to this deeper knowledge that we are more than what we've been told? I am so excited about that. I agree with you completely. Um, you know, when I was in my 20s, I felt like I never had met anyone uh, in my personal life who was going through this. And uh, even in the 30s, it was still a struggle. I remember, 
you know, Deepak Chopra and, and a few others starting to speak about consciousness. And it was such music to my ears because I felt like finally I was listening to someone who is expressing a worldview that perhaps I, I, you know, got lucky maybe, but, um, it seemed like I had been born with that worldview, um, and had just really struggled to find anybody else to speak mm. that language, if you will. And mm-hmm. so I'm just so glad. I can't tell you how happy my heart is to see that the momentum, just exactly what you've said, the momentum is shifting. That's, yeah, I mean, it's kind of undeniable. But then it, it leaves us in this almost limbo place of trying to make sense of it. And there's a lot of information out there. But um, like we were speaking about before the show, it's not always synthesized very well or easy to understand or easy to follow. (laughs) And so it can kind of it can be hard to make sense of all of this. And so I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, Have you have you always been kind of a spiritual person? Have you had kind of unexplained experiences, let's say, that kind of defied the traditional model? Absolutely. Well, I think from as young as I could remember, I felt strong, strong presence. And, um, you know, some of that is beyond words. So all I can say is strong presence and strong relationship or interaction, connection with a spiritual world and spiritual teachers, Mm. if you will. Um, So like a clear sentience, perhaps not a clairvoyance. And um, in the sixth grade, I had a, a different kind of awakening that was more into the scientific worldview because that spiritual presence, uh, you know, led me to live in the world from that very loving, open-hearted place and, and, and all of that, which that leads to in relationship to animals and people around you and what have you. But then all of a sudden, scientifically, and probably what led me into my search for quantum physics, I had, in sixth grade, I had just learned about atoms in science class, and I was doing my homework, and I'm sitting on my bed, and I'm just contemplating these atoms that I had just been told about, and, and this thing of energy and atoms, and and the pictures that had been given were like these little round dots floating in space. And I remember just contemplating, contemplating my little sixth grade brain trying to understand. (laughs) And I, and I was, and I literally was contemplating the question, well, how does that atom know that it's part of the chair? And how does this other atom right next to it floating in space know that it's part of my butt sitting on that chair? (laughs) And all of a sudden I was just infused with this deep knowing about how every particle, no matter how small, conscious living being Mm. and, and knowing because it is infused with consciousness itself and space infused with consciousness itself and all is living in that way. And so from a scientific, you know, point of view, that was my big moment. And from then on, I just couldn't get enough of reading of anything about energy that I could. I think that is so fantastic. And um, when we come back from the break, we are going to talk more with Valerie about the science side of all of this, about quantum physics and consciousness and energy and how it all works. And really, it does stem from that kind of realization of all of these particles are all alive. And what does that mean? So you're listening to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and we will be right back after this short break. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. 
Ladies, it's time to treat yourself. Join the Women of Wisdom for their annual fundraiser Saturday, June 4th. This is a sacred pampering day for women at North Seattle College. If you are a business and want to be one of our pamperers, we still have space. It's going to be a day to relax and treat yourself. For more information and to get tickets, visit thewowconference.org. That's the W-O-W conference.org. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and my guest today is Valerie Varan, who is talking with us about using quantum physics and psychology to embrace your higher consciousness. Uh, before we continue, though, I just want to make sure, Valerie, that everybody knows how to contact you uh, to find out about your book and uh, psychology practice and book signings and all of that good stuff. Oh, well, thanks for asking. Uh, people can contact me through Facebook, facebook.com, Valerie Varan, LPC. Uh, my websites are ValerieVaran.com. My psychotherapy website is HeartLivingSpirit.com. And I do have a couple of local events for anybody in the Boulder, Denver area. I'll be at the Boulder Barnes & Noble on uh, June 18th on nice. that Saturday. And then the Mile High Church is having an Art and Authors Festival coming up Saturday, June 25th. And I'll be there as well. Excellent. And um, phone number 303-547-8327 is my work cell, and people can feel free to call me there. Excellent. And this is what's really great is not only are you an author, but you're actually a practicing psychotherapist too. So for people who are experiencing the shift and everything we talked about in the first segment about changing consciousness and this changing awareness and making sense of it all, this is a practitioner who you can actually schedule appointments with who can help you. And I think that's extremely powerful because sometimes we need that little bit more, you know, we need a nudge. We need a human there to listen to us and kind of really help us with our specific situation. So all of this is really great. Thank you, Valerie. Um, Absolutely. So I, what I what I want to talk about now is really the quantum worldview uh, from quantum physics and kind of what it teaches us about energy and consciousness. Um, and I and I know you, you do a great job in the book of kind of giving practical ways of understanding this. And I think that our listeners would love to hear that. Well, absolutely. Um, I just returned from the Science of Consciousness conference and. It gave me even more permission to synthesize the different disciplines in the book in, in Chapter 1 because, 
you know, as a scientist, and I respect and appreciate where they're coming from, they are doing building blocks. And so each of them are looking at just the data of their kind of own world. And so at least as a psychotherapist, as you can appreciate, we have a little bit more freedom, perhaps, since we're not in academia, yes. to go ahead and be very practical and to go ahead and synthesize for multiple disciplines. So absolutely, when we speak about energy, uh, most people can really relate to um, if all of a sudden they meet someone new and electricity just totally goes through their body and... Um, we all know what that means to feel energized and alive. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that we can go ahead and talk about that power that comes uh, through energy and moves through waves of energy. So when scientists study it, they're busy looking at waves of energy and how it travels. And one thing I've always noticed is that energy in our reality, if you will, energy always carries different kinds of information. And that's what makes me different from you, different from your pocketbook, different from the couch that you're sitting on, is the information that is being carried at those Mm -hmm. deep waves of energy. And that's what gives rise to patterns of energy, patterns, uh, geometries, and and. We can go on and on, but even sure. holograms of light and energy. And so it can get quite complex, this beautiful energy in these patterns. But it seems that when energy is carrying information, we will actually perceive it as consciousness. So if anybody out there has had any kind of transformative experience, where you focus your mind or where your mind is opened to, imagine that you're zooming in to states of energy and certain realms of information. And that's why you have different experiences in Mm -hmm. consciousness. So -hmm. whether it's through your dream state or a psychedelic state or a natural meditative state, where you focus in consciousness will determine your experience, noticing that all experience is filtered through the physical senses. And that's why sometimes you can have states that you could say are out-of-body states and have knowings or perceptions that don't translate to physical words or physical vocabulary or even time or space for that matter. So does everything that exists have the certain level of consciousness to it? I believe that it does. And quantum physicists are now saying consciousness is a fundamental field. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to realize that instead of thinking that it's something just within a body or within the neurons or even within the microtubules of the neurons, Mm -hmm they're starting to realize that, wait a minute, and some of them are saying, wait a minute, consciousness really should be studied by physics Hmm. because consciousness is the fundamental field. Like gravity. Like gravity. And in fact, Hmm. I think they're going to find that there's something really magical about gravity and its parallels to magnetism. Like we all know what it feels like when you feel pretty magnetically attracted to someone. It's undeniable. Um, But there's something fundamental about consciousness, just like um, gravity. And in fact, I believe that consciousness is what bends space and time in their words, because it is consciousness or a specific state of consciousness that attracts to itself, magnetize, gravitates to itself, everything else. Hmm. So So, imagine that we have this consciousness inside of us that is even magnetized this body. Yes. 
Well, and that's what I've always uh, thought about is that, and, and, you know, I've had like Dr. Eben Alexander on the show who was completely brain dead. Isn't he wonderful? Um, you know, for those listeners who haven't heard, I think that was episode like four or five of, of the show. He was completely brain dead, had no functioning in any of the places in his brain that are responsible for the experience of the sensation and the visions that he was having. He traveled all the way up through all these levels of consciousness despite being completely brain dead. And he came back with the message that, you know, we're downloading consciousness. It, the conscious, you know, for years in psychology, the brain has been thought to be the creator of consciousness. And now we're thinking, we're actually seeing maybe the brain is channeling or downloading, but the consciousness exists outside of us because how could you have a fully conscious experience if your brain is dead? <laughs> so the, again, we don't know for sure. But it's definitely a really interesting perspective. Uh, and Valerie, I'm curious um, how this, for you at least, how this relates to the idea of the collective consciousness, which is, is kind of like this, the Jungian psychology concept of collective unconscious that we all share this consciousness together. Um, and do you think that this collective consciousness is, you know, related to the experience of psychic phenomenon like telepathy and lucid dreaming and remote viewing and this idea of synchronicity. Absolutely. So in Jungian psychology, right back in Freudian days, they kept talking about the unconscious because they were, they were talking in terms of how much was outside of awareness. Mm -hmm. Today, notice you and I are talking in terms of collective consciousness. Yes. And I do believe that when we see that consciousness is the fundamental field of reality, or what we're calling this materialistic reality, mm -hmm. and that uh, when we see that consciousness is this fundamental field, then we can see that everything is conscious and um, and I'm even trying to decide what, how all far down that rabbit hole I should go. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> we only have which like, angle you think I should well, take. We have like two or three minutes till we're going to take a break. So maybe we'll have a more concise version of it and then we can talk more about it. Um, but I guess for me, I'm curious about these, these kind of psychic phenomenon. We have a lot of listeners that have had psychic mm -hmm. phenomenon and psychic experiences that kind of defy our explanation. How does that play into it? Yeah, absolutely. So imagine if it is one interconnected field of consciousness, and they're calling it non-local fields mm -hmm. because it defies time and space. So I do absolutely believe that it's collective consciousness. It is when we are perceiving our wholeness consciousness that we perceive telepathy, we perceive remote viewing. We perceive things that are not even connected to us in space or time, but we are absolutely tapped into the fundamental field. Mm. That is, and it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Um, how do we tap into that field if we choose to? Some people, they, they have just, they have experiences that kind of defy explanation and other people have found ways to control those experiences and we're going to take a short break um, uh, when we come back on lucid planet radio i am here with valerie varan and we will talk more about psychology physics consciousness and and how to understand all of these interesting phenomenon that kind of exist outside of the realm of the traditional like energy healing dreams synchronicity all these fun things so stick with us and we will be right back after the break Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? 
This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I have Valerie Varan here talking about how to enhance your higher consciousness and understand it using quantum physics, psychology, etc. Um, when we left off, we talked a lot about kind of this collective consciousness and the experience of psychic phenomenon um, in the sense of we are experiencing a non-local field something that we are all sharing at once. And so we are able to tap in to this non-local field and pull information out of it, essentially. And um, one of the things that I find most fascinating, and uh, Valerie, you touch on this so nicely in your book, um, is the idea of energy healing and the aura. And, uh, you know, I, I guess my question is, what for what is the aura exactly? And how does this kind of play into our understanding of quantum physics and the self? Absolutely. Well, most of us are used to thinking of ourself as a material object. And in a way, that mystery is what, you know, what gave uh, rise to quantum physics in the first place, because no matter how deeply physicists tried to figure out what are we made out of, they kept finding out that we were made mostly of space. Empty space. And yep. in a in a cosmos uh, episode, uh, Neil was standing in a cathedral, and he said, "All right, see, no matter how far that rabbit hole we go down to, this <laughs> cathedral is the amount of space. And see that little dust particle floating in that light beam? That's the amount of particle." And yet, when they go zoom into that particle, it too is made mostly of a cathedral volume of space, and so on and so forth. So when you really start noticing who you are in terms of energy and these beautiful geometries and, and kaleidoscopes of light, then all of a sudden you realize that who you really are is that field, and that field is boundless. It has no end. So the aura is multi, multi-layers of this field of consciousness. So the most visible to our eyes, because the most physical, is the slower frequencies of light, which is electromagnetism. So you have the electrical signaling of neurons, 
uh, and that's how the body communicates, let's say at that most physical level, but then you have that beautiful magnetism, Mm -hmm. kind of the law of attraction and repulsion going on. Uh, but then at other layers, and it for most of us, we don't really care what a, what a torsion field is, T-O-R-S-I-O-N, but it's kind of cool to know that when we have all these really cool experiences that, um, like telepathy and some of those ones you were asking me about, mm-hmm. we have those, and most physicists are going to say, well, that was impossible. You can't have had that experience because um, it it doesn't follow electromagnetic physics and time and space, you know, it doesn't, those waves take time and space to travel, so it must be impossible. So I love the scientists who have dared gone out on the edge to say, you know what, these experiences and consciousness are so well documented. Can we quit arguing and saying that they don't exist when clearly they do? And can we go about, uh, you know, looking at our rules in physics and say, well, what do we need to adapt so that we can understand them? And the scientists studying torsion fields have done just that. So now for us, it doesn't really matter what they are, although they do, they are correlated with spin motion, which when you see that all galaxies and universes kind of have this spin to it, I think that's fascinating. But we can just Mm -hmm. say to ourselves, wow, okay, we're having these experiences of time and space. Well, that's dealing with regular physics and electromagnetism. But those of us who are having these supposedly impossible experiences, like you said, the telepathy and what have you, uh, even things that, you know, like you might experience the thought of something before it even happens. Well, that would really be considered possible. But in torsion fields, it's regularly happening, and they're starting to understand uh, exactly how. So that's exciting. So imagine that our aura is made up of all of these layers of consciousness that we can tap into because every cell of our body is actually working as an energy receiver transmitter. And what's actually happening is you take energy that's kind of beyond us, let's say, uh, huge fast frequency kinds of energy, speed of light type, you know, way beyond speed of light type energy. And, and it's constantly being transduced down into lower and lower frequencies. Just like, for instance, there's a power uh, plant and then that gets transduced to the power station and then transduced to the transformer and then transduced down to the plug that we plug our hair dryers into. Mm-hmm. And in the same way that we don't want to plug our hair dryer into the power plant, that would not be good. Um, The same way, like every, every bandwidth of energy needs to be transduced down. So your aura, no wonder you can have so many different experiences in consciousness because you really truly have access to all kinds of unbelievable energies out there. Where you focus is where you will experience. Exactly. And so when we have these kind of transpersonal or holotropic states, or when we go into psychedelic states, for example, it almost the analogy, it kind of changes the transformer. You know, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's like plugging in to to the actual power plant. Um, It it is. And I've had people with serious damage because of it. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Well, because it can be so intense and it's really more than um, mm-hmm. almost more than you can absorb. I mean, I've, I've had several shows, for example, on DMT, the spirit molecule. Um, yeah. you, you know, if you guys, if listeners haven't heard of that, check out those past shows where there's just so much access to information. It's, it can be completely overwhelming for people. It can be extremely healing though. Uh, it can also be mm-hmm. <laughs> incredibly terrifying. And uh, so absolutely we, right. It's it's yeah. like it can awaken you into realms that you would have never conceived of before. Yes. And at the same time, that's why we do have to be careful, because if we naturally awaken uh, and there's probably ways we can do that. But if we naturally awaken, then when you think of the fact that every cell of your body is a completely different seven years down the road, right? These cells are constantly oh, yeah. being replaced. I love that. So <laughs> yeah. And so I think it's really cool to think that as we expand our awareness, then the molecules to the body that we're actually attracting are very different and they're made of different structures of light. So things that it's like our body naturally is adapting to our consciousness. And so we're actually prepared. 
So that's why sometimes unfortunate things can happen if someone does, let's say, do psychedelics and then all of a sudden forget about bad trip. Now, this feels like something broke something. <laughs> People can have those experiences because they're tapping into things that their physical radar, the physical hardware, the physical antennas weren't quite designed for. Yeah. They weren't quite ready for. Yeah. Luckily, I think that's a rarer event. For sure. But, you know, it can happen. Um, while we're on the mm -hmm. subject of our cells adjusting to our frequency, um, I know that, you know, Michael Talbot's The Holographic Universe was a really inspiring mm -hmm. book for both of us, I, I think. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were talking during the break about how we are these holograms of light. And I know we only have, what, like two or three minutes till the next break, but I think this is a really important concept for our listeners. And I was hoping you could kind of explain what that means that we're a light hologram. Absolutely. So imagine that, imagine, let's say, bubbles within bubbles within bubbles within bubbles. So our aura that is the, the slowest frequency is the one that clairvoyance would see as our aura. You know, we're going to see the greens and the yellows and the different plays of colors going on. But imagine that at the same time, there's lots of different, lots of other different bandwidths of energy. So, for instance, if we look at a rainbow, we can see it as white light separated into its distinct bandwidths of visible light. And the same thing with us. We have not only these visible light bandwidths of frequencies and energies going on, but things that are way beyond what's visible. Mm. And it truly is light. So we truly are at our core electric light and then magnetic light and photonic light. And again, this torsional kind of light. And so all existing simultaneously playing like a symphony, like chords that are being played at the same time. But the C and the E and the G are different bandwidths of light. <laughs> and so we're just used, you know, we're just used to only dabbling in the most physical light, the slowest frequency yes. light. Yes. And that's why so many, uh, you know, so many of us across all these different thought traditions, whether it's science or spirituality, psychology, we always talk about this. You are more than a physical being. You are more. And there's so much more. Um, we're going to talk more about this after the break. Uh, we're going to wrap up the show and just talk a little bit more about kind of how we find understanding and purpose and kind of how we how we find ourselves through all of these unbelievable levels that we're dealing with. Um, I also want to mention as we go into the break, this entire show, you've been hearing music from two of my favorite artists, Closey and Templo, who will both be performing at Sonic Bloom Festival in Colorado in June, uh, starting on the 16th of June to the 19th of June in Spanish Peaks County. I will also be there uh, doing press for Lucid Planet and doing a workshop on sex and consciousness um, on Sunday at 1130. And I look forward to seeing you there. Um, you can also find links to how to download. You can get free downloads of all of these tracks um, by going to SoundCloud for Templo and Closey as well. So I hope you're enjoying that and stay tuned. I will be right back with Valerie Varan to finish the show. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Are you and your family looking for one manageable lifestyle change that will positively impact your health? Look no further. That change begins inside your drinking glass. Learn how to put a lid on junk drinking by sipping from a recipe collection of colorful, fresh, tasty, wholesome fruit and vegetable blends. Get your copy now of Sip the Garden. 
fun, easy drinks for a healthier family by T. Carrie Mitchell. Visit lifestyle120.com for information on how to order. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now through March for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. I am here with Valerie Varan wrapping up this very interesting show about consciousness, quantum physics, and psychology. And we had a really cool talk um, during the last section about how us humans are kind of like these multi-layered beings of light. And we have all of these different things happening. And part of what's amazing is that because of all of these different layers of light that are happening, we get to experience um, this magnetic law of attraction or synchronicity. And uh, Valerie, can you explain to our listeners kind of how the law of attraction works in light of just quantum physics and psychology, you know, not just like, oh, it works, you, you know, you believe something and then it happens. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? Well, absolutely. And I think a lot of people get discouraged because sometimes when people talk about it very lightly, it makes it sound like whatever we think repeatedly, that that will automatically happen in our life in in terms of dreams and imaginings. But then they don't have that experience. And so then they doubt all of it. Yeah. I would say that What happens is when you're tapping into higher frequency energies that are the torsion fields, that's the non-local layers, that Mm. has the power Mm. to magnetize. So what you're really doing is, for lack of better word, right, we're tapping into soul consciousness layers, which is collective consciousness. Mm. And so at a deep, if you will, telepathic level, we can feel feel and be moved by those things that are non-local. And that's how we start experiencing these synchronicities. That's how we start understanding more soul purpose and, and, and we start feeling that we want to contribute our part to this whole. And that desire alone is a soul desire. It's not an ego desire. Mm -hmm. And it, it, plummets you right into soul consciousness and the synchronicities that are going to start working to make it happen for you. And you can just think of them as all opportunities. Oh yeah. Well, opportunities. I always say, you know, when, you know, a lot of the time when we are in that manifesting state, the opportunities come, but 
they're sometimes not the way we would expect. You know, they, they get delivered mm-hmm. in these very strange ways. But if you say no, you're still closing that door. You know, you still brought it, even though it might not be how you expect. Just say yes and, and see what happens. And, <laughs> you know, what, one mm-hmm. thing that another thing that seems really uh, that I hear a lot, too, is the idea of, you know, if you're trying to manifest something or use the law of attraction, that it's not just about things you want for your ego. Like I want this car because it's awesome and I want to go cruise around in it. It's more manifesting things of importance for your soul journey. And you mentioned your soul purpose. Um, and I guess, do you, do you believe that each of us has a purpose and what do you think that purpose is? If yes. I believe that it's not something that's only one purpose, if you will, but, the soul is collective consciousness and it's a thinking, it's a we thinking, uh, right? If we're just trying to manifest things for ourselves, that is ego thinking, if you will. It's an I consciousness. It just thinks about what it wants for itself. Mm -hmm. And because that's dealing with electromagnetism, it's like, okay, well, you're going to have to work really hard to get there because you're going to work with slower energies there. But when you all of a sudden go into soul consciousness, you're thinking we we, we this, we need that, and you want to do your part. And it's almost like every thought you have about who you are and what you're capable of, who you are is love, and, and now you want to express it in certain ways. Every time your mind goes to how you can express love, the universe will find a way to let you do that. Hmm. And so that. that is our purpose, right, is yes. to is to somehow be love here. And what does that really mean? Love means that energy that spirals us all together, Mm -hmm. that energy that unites us and magnetizes us and connects us. Yes. It's right. It's very real. And Mm -hmm. so anytime you have the thought of building, uniting, synthesizing, integrating, bridging, you're going into soul consciousness. Mm. And it will take you into the related experiences of soul consciousness. Soul purpose is one of them. And you will be brought many opportunities to express love in whatever way that you're feeling most comfortable at the time. And like you said, it's completely unexpected many, many times. Yeah, many times. So do you have advice for people who want to make positive change in the world? I mean, let let me just say this. I'm an optimist. I believe that we have the power as humanity, as one collective to make changes we need to save the planet and to take care of each other and to take care of life. Um, And almost all of my guests are optimists and and believers that, yes, we can make a difference in this lifetime. Um, And I, I'm wondering, do you have kind of advice for people who are looking to find that purpose for how they can find a career in something that has that higher level of consciousness? Absolutely. And I'm going to be very practical. First off, just notice wherever you are and move from there. So whatever career that you find yourself in, ask yourself how you can do for the greatest good, where you are. Second of all, when you are meditating, when you allow yourself to think of what can I do for the good of all, you will receive answers in many different forms and know that the universe does not expect you to do all of them or all of them at once so that you say, what can I do today? What can I do this year? Take baby steps. And allow yourself conditions to thrive. When you notice what makes you thrive, you start noticing who you are as a soul. When you allow yourself those conditions to thrive, that's really what self-love is about. And it totally takes you into soul consciousness. And then you can get creative from there. But imagine if each of us got out of our way. And we decided to fully be who we are. I mean, really fully come out of the closet like I did with the book. Really, that was about coming out of the closet. (laughs) And it's like, just imagine that we're going to fully be who we are. And we're going to use our talents and whatever we know today for the greatest good in some really creative way, even if everybody says it's impossible. Think of how quickly the world will change. But you know what? Even this most simplest thing. Every time we think thoughts, 
that are uniting and accepting and respecting, we are putting thoughts of higher vibration out there and we're already changing the world because that energy is instantaneously everywhere affecting everything else all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Every time we tap into our heart and we practice states of love, compassion, acceptance, respect, we're tapping into soul consciousness right there, and that energy is going everywhere instantaneously at once, instantaneously. So we can do the simplest of things, and we can do the grandest of things, and the universe has no judgment. Mm. And that's so nice, too, because of how much pressure there is out there. So many, I saw a video and it was a really moving video, but it was like a young boy crying hysterically because, you know, the planet is in trouble and he was so upset and I totally can relate. Um, But sometimes, you know, we can be paralyzed by the amount of pressure and the amount of work that needs to be done, or we can take that on our shoulders and, and it really can become too much. And so you're absolutely right that even the smallest step in the right direction is still going to push the collective along and that no one person is into, is required to do everything. You know? And perfection lies in our diversity. How beautiful that yes. you have your gifts and you're sharing your gifts and then I do my little part and he does his little part and she does her yes. little part. Yes. And together we achieve this. Collectively we achieve this. So it's yes. it's kind of like Higher consciousness is about tapping into the sense of we, the sense of just doing our part for the collective whole and letting, allowing ourselves to be moved step by step through the process because guess what? We are collaboratively creating. We really true are co-creating. I love that too. And um, wow, I just want to thank you, Valerie. We're out of time. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, you know, we just, everyone out there, my closing thought is that you're reminding me of what a good friend of mine, Dr. Dream once said when he was on the show, which is that we are like 7 billion puzzle pieces. We all fit together. And when we figure out how we fit together, everything changes, you know, even a little bit. So Valerie, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's been wonderful. Um, And for all of our listeners out there, you can turn into Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly um, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, and 2 p.m. Pacific on CRN Digital Talk and all of its affiliates, as well as Transformation Talk. Um, You can find out how to listen again at thelucidplanet.com. Find me Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, The Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly. Listen to all of our podcasts on SoundCloud and iTunes, et cetera. Um, and yeah, there there's really is no excuse for not getting caught up with all of our podcasts because they are all free. You're welcome. <laughs> um, next week, I am really stoked to welcome Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., who will be talking to us about, about the ancient Toltec secrets for self-mastery. So that is going to be another fantastic and interesting show. Um, So thank you guys for listening. Light and love. And I will talk to you next week. Bye. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly.